Hello everyone and welcome back to another Monster Hunter video. This is a little off script and it's because I am so excited to say that they have announced two new Monster Hunter games for the Nintendo Switch. One of those being Monster Hunter Stories 2, which I am excited for but not as interested in as this next inclusion they announced, which is Monster Hunter Rise, which is a brand new Monster Hunter experience. Very similar in, in visual design, I would say, to I would call it a cross between world and the old school experience. It, it kind of has world's realism, but at the same time has a bit of an anime flair that we would expect from the old school games, more so around the Generations Ultimate to the late frontier designs that we've we've seen before. So yeah, I'm just going to be going through the trailer and the direct and kind of just analyzing some of what we see, as well as discussing my thoughts on the release of Rise. Again, we're only going to be focusing on Rise. I don't I don't really want to go too far into stories at the moment. The Palamute seems to be the first thing that gets introduced to us within the game. I am pretty excited for this inclusion because it's probably as close to monster riding as we're ever going to get realistically. We were able to ride herbivore species and some carnivorous species in Monster Hunter World, but it never really went past being on rails and didn't really have a lot of depth to it. I'm excited to see a situation where we get to use the Palamute directly, control it directly, and it looks like it has some cool features. In the Nintendo Direct, they talked about how hunters can ride their Palamute. They talked about how there's no stamina drain, similar to how you play as a Palico in uh, Monster Hunter Generations. You can eat and do various actions while riding. They made it seem like the Palamute has different styles that you can switch through. In the Direct, they talked about the attacker style or something like that. I need to actually go back and revisit the footage. It seems like it'll be a fairly aggressive support character for you, and the Palico currently will be taking on the more more actual supportive role when it comes to like potentially healing you or buffing you. We get introduced to the player character, we get to see that the game is fully voiced in English, which is to be expected since Monster Hunter World did the same thing. Monster Hunter Stories 2 is also fully voiced in English. Uh, I have my own thoughts on the, the voice acting quality, but you know, we're gonna leave that for a later time. First thing that we really get to see with the hunter interacting with its Palamute is not just that it's riding it, but that the hunter has the ability to have the Palamute actually run up walls, similar to how a Palico would be able to do that. And again, there's no stamina drain, so it means that these maps are most likely going to be designed very large due to the traversal speed that the characters have. In the direct, they talked about how it's going to be one open world location per area, with the, I believe, Shrine Ruins being the only area they've really shown so far. And the player has the new Wirebug feature, which allows them to grapple around the area. We see them wall running. We see them grappling onto monsters, similar to the Clutch Claw, but it's a little bit different now because you actually seem to just pull yourself over to the monsters for more mobility and then immediately go into an attack in order to keep you within the action. Action. So that's interesting, you know, think about that what you will so far. It looks like a kind of rework on the design aspects of the clutch claw and the grappling hook and potentially the scout flies. So I'm interested to see how that's going to develop in the future. I'm interested in getting more information on that. Also, I just want to point out that these map designs are very reminiscent to the early beta demo versions of Monster Hunter 4 that they were showing off. There's a video on IGN about it and I talked about it in my Monster Hunter 4 history video, but essentially there was was a lot more platforming involved in a lot of the maps designs and that seems to be the case here. So it'll be interesting to see if there's not only platforming and verticality but if there is also destructible environments and ways for the player to interact with these environments more than just scaling them. So we then get introduced to the new base area, which is called Kimura Village. We also get introduced to little bits of the storyline. There is an enigmatic older male character. We don't really know who that is at the moment, but he talks about how the village or the hunters have a rampage on their hands. And what a rampage is, is currently unknown but it's most likely going to be a situation where there are a lot of monsters invading their specific location. Later on, they talk about a calamity and it's been a long time since there's ever been a calamity that they've experienced. And I think the only time we ever really hear the term calamity is in regards to Fatalis. So it'll be interesting to see if Fatalis is implemented into this game in some capacity. I'm, I, I, I would personally love to see Fatalis in this specific game because the high mobility would make for a very interesting and intricate fight against Fatalis. So next up, we get introduced to some of the additions when it comes to monsters. The first one is Aknosom, which is a bird wyvern. It has a large crest on its head, which it uses 
closest to attack, and it's very similar in design to Kuliaku since they are both bird wyverns. Next up is Tetronodon. It is an amphibian monster. It looks like it has the ability to eat things and expand its stomach, similar to a Great Jaggy, so that'll be interesting. And its design seems to be similar to a hippo of some sort. I'm not completely sure at the moment. Next up is Great Izuki. This is like the Jaggy, Jagra, Great Macau monster that you expect to see in pretty much every entry. The cool thing about Great Izuki though is that its packs seem to be more controlled. The main monster, Great Izuki, seems to have two miniature versions of Izuki, and it uses them to fight as a trio, and that seems to be the main focus of the fight. The two miniature Izuki seem to work together, and I imagine all three will work together in some capacity in the hunt, usually doing some sort of combo maneuver or something like that. We've seen something similar like this with uh, Nono Oregon and and Camu Oregaran in Monster Hunter Frontier, which will actually be talked about in my next Frontier video covering season 6 to 10. We see some returning monsters like Arzuros and Toby Kadachi, but then we finally get to see the flagship monster, Magnamalo. Magnamalo is a fanged wyvern, they confirm that in the direct. It's unknown what its element is going to be because it has these pink flames surrounding it. You know, typically you would think maybe it's going to be dragon element, but it might be something completely new and we're not sure at the moment. We also see the return of Nursilla, which is one of the only Demnoceron species in the game, so that's great. We might actually get some new Demnoceron species, which would be huge because they are featured very little within the mainline releases. A lot of the returning weapons get shown off. There's Insect Glaive, there's Lance, I believe. But the one thing I really wanted to focus on is that Sword and Shield looks like it is showing off the ability to whip around the wire bug, which I found really interesting. I imagine each weapon type is going to have its own functionality with the wire bug outside of being able to just grapple onto monsters. It'll be cool to see if the wire bug will directly feed into the moveset of the weapons and we might get some really unique concepts to come out of that. Like they show off the sword and shield guy just whipping it around and it seems to be doing some decent damage to the monster, but it would be really cool to see, for example, the long sword being able to be whipped out and brought back to the player while they're hunting. I think that would be pretty sweet. Now, the main character says something really weird here at the end. He says, this is for my fellow hunters. It makes it seem like they have been injured or attacked in some way, but we don't actually know what the issue is at the moment. Are hunters going to be dying in this game? Is this video game going to be, is this entry in the series going to be a little more violent than previous entries in this series? We're not completely sure, but it could be an interesting storyline and I'm excited to see it because that is something that they've been building on since Monster Hunter 4 is building better better storylines. We've seen it in 4 and 4U. We saw it a little bit in Generations, and then we saw a grand storyline in Monster Hunter World. So I'll be interested to see what the storyline is like in Monster Hunter Rise, because I wasn't super happy with World storyline, but I really like the caravan story in Monster Hunter 4. So if they kind of mesh some of that together, we might have something that could be fairly interesting. So yeah, the game's out March 26, 2021, and there's going to be a main game deluxe edition, which comes with a layered armor set. So layered armor sets are back, some new gestures, some poses, some face paint, and some layered stuff for your Palico and your Palamute. So all of the features from Monster Hunter World seem to be coming back into Monster Hunter Rise. And it seems like they're taking a lot of the design structure from World, which is a little worrying for me because I was really hoping they would kind of return to an old school experience. But we don't know if this is a mainline game or not. At least I don't know at the time of recording this. And who knows, like this game isn't out yet. I don't actually know if it's going to be good or not. Maybe there are huge improvements on the Monster Hunter formula that I am actually going to enjoy. So the cosmetics and stuff, kind of a red flag for me, but who knows, could still be good. However, the last thing that they show off that I know I will be getting are the three new amiibos. We will be getting an amiibo for Palamute, Magnamalo, and the Palico. These will apparently, one, give you layered armor sets, and two, will also allow you to enter some sort of daily lottery where you have the potential to win items that you can use, probably for crafting or generic consumables. We don't know yet. And apparently, some of these features and the game itself will tie directly into Monster Hunter Stories 2 in some capacity. Certain things will cross over, you might be able to get bonuses in one game from the other, and vice versa. 
Apparently the title Monster Hunter Rise is due to the fact that there's a lot of cliff running and verticality, something we've already seen since Monster Hunter 4, but as you can see, it has been upgraded almost exponentially. So you'll be a lot faster getting around the map. Starting camps are back. When they were talking about the Shrine Ruins, they mentioned starting camp. So you will still be entering areas into a camp where it will probably follow the Monster Hunter World style of camps and you will be able to like grab items and change weapons and eat. They mentioned when talking about the village that there were a lot of amenities there, ones that we would expect like the smithy. So there's most likely going to be a canteen as well. So yeah, one last thing I want to talk about that they discussed in the direct is that the inclusion of turf wars within some capacity are coming back. I believe they showed Tetranodon fighting in Arzuros, but we don't know if it's necessarily a turf war or if it's some sort of new mechanism. They made it seem like they're going to be upgrading it in some way, so maybe we'll be able to use these fights more to our advantage rather than just one of the monsters dealing a large amount of damage to the other. Who knows? I don't, but I would like to, and hopefully we get more info about this game before the release date in 2021. Some final thoughts I have on it. I am a little worried. I was really, really hoping the Switch Edition would be more of a traditional Monster Hunter experience, and that is clearly not what we are getting. It does seem like a blend of old school design and aesthetic mixed with Monster Hunter World's design philosophies. So we'll see because maybe they'll be able to complement each other in some way. And again, I don't know if it's a mainline game or not, but when they make these non-mainline games, they really get this design mindset where they want to go as hard as possible. They want to make it as flashy as possible. And I feel like we're seeing that in Monster Hunter Rise. So I am pretty excited to see where that goes because they are fun. They are they are fun games to play. Generations Ultimate was a lot of fun to play and Monster Hunter Frontier has a bunch of crazy, crazy stuff in it in the late updates that is absolutely bonkers and I can't wait to cover that. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. Thanks so much for watching. Are you excited for Monster Hunter Rise? Are you excited for Monster Hunter Stories 2? If you are, keep an eye on this channel. I'll be covering more of it as more details come out. I will additionally be releasing the next Monster Hunter Frontier video sometime this weekend and I will have more coverage on Monster Hunter as a whole. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Don't you get my